So there it is with the Naked GoPro mounted on there. Um, I did have to take off the bottom plate to do that. Um, you can see deep in there, there is the nylock nut and I had to pass the bolt up through the underside of the top plate to get in there um, and fix that and then refix the top plate but it's nice and secure on there now that's done change the plug there so it worked for the naked GoPro not the Insta360 smoke camera nice little look at the naked GoPro uh, naked Cadex there um, looks really cool don't think I'll be leaving an arm sat around too long because that is likely to overheat on you they get pretty pretty hot as it is um, a little tiny crossfire antenna there and the left hand polarized VTX antenna for the Cadex. We've got the cap and the Nano strapped onto the, the back upright there as well as a zip tie around the battery strap to stop the battery strap ripping off of the pads if we get a battery eject. Um, look at those little robo motors, they are just really cool little motors. I do love the way they look and feel. That's as low as I could get the uh, the prop. You can see in on the end of the uh, ducks here, ducks, prop guards, prop guards, prop guards. Um, there's little recesses. I fill those recesses with foam, and then one on the bottom as well, and that gives me a bit of extra protection. A small bit of rubber on the tip, so there was a recess there, so I've um, I put rubber on that tip as well, and that's just going to like protect those prop guards a little bit more and anything that they hit from getting damaged because it's polycarbonate and it could like shatter or crack easily. Um, here's the Cadex Nebula with its, all its protection in there. So the Nano, hopefully the Nano 2 because the Nano 1 was rubbish. The arms are a lot stronger with these ducks on. Um, ducks with the prop guards on. Um, a lot stronger with the prop guards on. Um, and then on the bottom, I've added another strap. And then as good as this this strap was, uh, pad was, I've added one on top. It's only like a millimetre thick rubber. But um, I had to do that because when I cranked up the strap, the battery was getting pulled into the into the bolts there and indenting. Um, and obviously that's no good. Um, it would damage your battery and obviously in a crash it could cause even more problem. God forbid catch on fire with a big impact. Um, I've also added this millimetre rubber to each arm so if I get a heavy impact on a stone this will survive obviously it's a unibody base plate and as much as I bought a spare one I don't want to be replacing it if I don't have to so a little bit of extra insurance there um, to save me it was a props in out in configuration in the end um, I put it in bait flight apart from changing some modes um, because the the buzzer was set up for Orcs one um, it was all all good. I've left it everything stock, and I've activated it in DJI Assist. So we are ready to go. So let's get it outside um, and let's put it for its paces.
Well, there you go. Um, I hope those flights showed you everything that you needed to know um, on what this little guy can do, but let's talk about it. Um, I was using a 450 milliamp battery, milliamp hour, and um, cinematic, no acro, no naked GoPro, five minutes. It's not a brand, brand new battery, so you might be able to get a bit more with a, a, a spangly one. Um, I was getting four minutes, no GoPro, doing acro. Um, and then when I put the naked GoPro on it and was doing mix flying, as you saw in the, the clip there, um, I got three and a half minutes. And yeah, fantastic. Just wow. You can do that cinematic flying with this. And you know, like when I was flying over the lake there with the, the naked GoPro and stuff, there's no way you're going to be thinking that that is this tiny little hex copter that's doing that. No way. When I was doing the dives, there's no way. This thing dives, like proper dives with a naked GoPro on it. Pulls out of it, no problem. Backflips, rolls. I mean, okay, yeah, it's not It's not like a freestyle quad. Of course it's not. Um, but for the what I think is probably the tiniest platform that you can get that carries a naked GoPro and it acros like that, blown away. That was just what I was hoping for. Um, this is, I'm, I'm classing this as an upgrade next to my Beta 95 XV2. Um, I use that with the Naked GoPro a lot um, and I really like it but it's got its own little issues and the issues that the 95X has got, this doesn't. I needed something that was had like zero intimidation factor, like no intimidation for me to be able to fly around people. Um, and this is so past intimidation, I think it's more amusement. Um, and with the combination of just like this little luminous section here and the lights inside when you turn it on, it's like a little Christmas tree lighting up in that. I'm going to be able to fly this around people at different events and this is going to be no problem. It handles great and with the HD camera, which I probably still will replace for a better one. Um, this is going to do everything I need it to do. You know, you, you can get that real smooth flying, you can get the acro, um, it's got a bit of poke to it when you want to go. Um, superb, just superb job fly route. I said at the start of the review, it looks a bit gimmicky. Um, and maybe it does, but is it a gimmick? Nah, man, <laughs> it is totally 100% not a gimmick. Those six motors, they do the job they really they really do the job um, but what was the problem why have I got a different antenna on it um, well my first flight I flew off the hill there as you can see in the in the film um, I've started to fly out across the, the cornfield with no fear because obviously it's crossfire and it's it's DJI loads of range um, and it fell so right in the middle of the cornfield. I was so pissed off. It's got a naked caddis fister on it. We're in a heat wave right now. I was just asking for a burnout on the very first flight. I had to rush out and run through that cornfield. Like it was it was stressful to say the least. Um and luckily it hadn't burnt out. And I went through my protocols and the first protocol was for me to swap out the antenna. Um, because I checked it again and it fell safe again. It was I've got this on link quality on my goggles, so I could see the link quality, not the RSSI, um, and the link quality would fluctuate in, in a hover in the same spot. It would go up and down really badly, um, and so I knew it was either a faulty nano, faulty antenna, or, or problem with the board. God forbid. Um, so I changed this out, this is a normal um, TBS antenna that I put into antenna tubing with heat shrink. In effect I've just sort of made a, a, a jerry with um, a malt tea. I put that on there and perfect, no problem, loads of range again, everything all good, link quality was rock solid. Um, so what happened? What happened was, um, on the mini mortal, um, if we can get, there you go, 
and that little silver spot you can see there's a few of them that is exposed ground sheafing um, this is meant to be like this um, well I don't know if it's meant to be like it but it seems to be like it on a lot of the mini morsels so I haven't seen one that isn't um, and so basically uh, this is not long enough so as this passes through the top plate there as you can see the other one and it's unlike this one where I've got lots of length and I've got uh, heat shrink on it as well you can see that that doesn't actually even touch the top plate and then it comes around and I've had to actually spool it round a couple of times in the um, in there I re I re heat shrink to that nano with the, the antenna spooled round I made it the length I needed it um, but this one is just not long enough and then the hole through the carbon is sharp so it, as it runs through the, the top here, it catches on this back edge um, and in Andy RC's video of this the same thing on the chafing um, his didn't fail safe, his obviously had gone right through um, and wasn't catching on the carbon like mine um, so flywheel sort it out um, either different antenna, different antenna placement or heat shrink on the antenna I think if you get one of these um, with the TBS you need to check this out straight away you don't need this fail safe in low flying over lake like I was or something um, lose your quad over a chafed antenna that would just be fantastic um, so either it needs a longer antenna or you should put some heat shrink on that um, just to give it some extra protection I could probably put some heat shrink on that and put it back on um, but do I care now um, I think this will probably actually give me just extra penetration and extra range um, because of the nature of all of the with the GoPro on here and everything and then the battery on the bottom is like a chunk so I quite like that sticking out there for, for better better functionality as it were um, but apart from that over the moon absolutely over the moon go get one they're superb absolutely superb so I hope that helped guys I hope you liked it if you did please give me a thumbs up um, and subscribe and drop me a comment um, I really do really do appreciate it um, and I'll catch you on the next video cheers